Well, hello, friends, and uh, apologies for being away. Had some uh, complications, to say the least. As you well know, I had uh, I was I was not not in the best of weather, best of weather, but <laughs> I wasn't doing great um, last week, and as a result, I uh, I was sick for a while, about a week, like I said, and I, I took some time off. Previous week, I had a vicious, uh, vicious migraine that really knocked me for a loop. And I tried to make it up to you, but it just schedule-wise wouldn't work out. You know, I've scheduled Monday evenings to be able to provide this um, space for you. And when uh, when things don't work out the way you want them to, sometimes that's the case. I just uh, couldn't couldn't make the time to to show up, unfortunately. But you know, that's neither here nor there today. I guess we are here now, and we are ready to chat with you about. Where we're sitting, mental health-wise. And right now, my mental health is probably the best it's been in quite some time. And um, it's not to say I, I still don't have my moments. I had a moment Saturday evening that was pretty grim and dark. But I don't, I don't, I'm not going to dig into that tonight. Uh, mostly because I don't, I don't feel up to discussing it. Uh, it was dark, it was grim. But as usual, I got through. I managed, but I think my mental health has really improved because um, of the addition to the family, if you will. My uh, my partner Bridget, my beloved, my my wife, um, had talked to me for some time about um, getting a dog, and I said, "I just I don't I, I can't get a dog. I I don't have the time to take care of one. I'm very very busy." I work 75, 80 hours a week. I don't know how I'm going to be able to take care of a dog. She's like, no, no, I want to adopt a dog, but I could bring her over here sometime. Would you you'd be supportive of that if I brought her over here to say hello and hang out with you? And I'm like, well, yes, of course I would be supportive of that. Well, it looks like that dog has uh, taken a piece of my heart and is now very much ensconced in my life. And um, she's going to fall asleep right here beside me on the floor uh, in the studio as I give her her rubber chicken. Lola, come get it. Come get your chicken. Come get it. Come get it. Come get the chicken. And she won't jump. <laughs> She's such a funny little girl. Not too interested in the chicken right now, but she is going to fall asleep right next to a light fixture. That's really bright, sweetheart. Let me, let me move that for you. I don't want you to get hurt. Had to move a light. Nope. That's not the best spot for it either. Hang on. <laughs> yeah. This is what happens when you bring a dog into your life. When you weren't expecting to. Everything gets kind of turned upside down, topsy-turvy. I'm okay with it all. Don't get me wrong. I'm very happy about it. Here she comes. Look at that. There's, there's Lola. There's my baby girl. Hi, Lola. How are you, sweetheart? Do you want to say hello in the microphone? Lola. Come here, sweetheart. Lola. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Hey, and where's Daddy's girl? There's Daddy's girl, eh? She'll she'll uh, jump in and out of camera, I'm sure, as she feels like it. Here, say hello, Lola. <laughs> hello, sweetheart. How are you? You are such a pretty girl, you know that? Do you know how pretty you are? So she is a... Um, Part American Bulldog, uh, part Dogo Argentino, which is an Argentine breed. I guess it's the sort of the national breed in Argentina. And she's um, 80 pounds. I don't know how many kilos that is. 30 kilos? I'm not sure. I'd have to check. Somewhere near that uh, amount. And solid muscle. And uh, a stealer of hearts, because she's certainly stolen mine. 
And I will tell you this, when she cuddles up next to me on the couch and sticks her head under my arm, it just, uh, yeah, warms my heart. Hey, sweetheart, how are you? Oh, oh, she's going to, I think she's going to jump down. Because mommy is doing something, so she's investigating. So, yeah, Lola. Um, oh, hi, sweetheart. How are you? There's some... Some ASR eating effects for you, if you will. Okay, darling. That's the go- that's a good girl. That's a good- yeah. Mom's got food, so she's not going to pay too much attention to me right now. She'll just look at me every now and then. She- and the funny thing is, she will see herself on camera because I've taken you know selfies with her and I, and she's like all of a sudden, oh, that's me. I see me, and is really um, intently staring at herself, trying to make out what it is because I have lots of mirrors in this place. Not because I'm vain, but because it's a small apartment. So you put up mirrors to make it look bigger. And I have one on the uh, door to go out, you know, to leave my apartment. It's, it's a fairly big mirror. Almost fills the entire door. So she'll just go and stare at herself from time to time, which I think is kind of funny. <laughs> I had to convince her for the longest time. I'd put my face next to her and i go, look, see me, you, you, me, me, you, you. Cats recognize themselves in the mirror. Dogs tend not to, so... It takes them a little while to figure out that that is who they are looking at themselves and not another dog. So, yeah. So that's Lola, the latest addition uh, to turn my life upside down, sideways, and I welcome every split second of it, even when I have to take her out and clean up after her, which is not an easy subject for me to do because although when I was younger and I babysat a lot of children, I did change a lot of diapers, but after turning the age of 30... As a man, that um, the ability to do that without vomiting becomes less and less and less. Somehow, I have found a way to work through it. Although, suffice to say, each time I've had to do it, the imagery is burned into my retinas forever. And I will never forget it. And my lovely partner is sitting to my left laughing her head off at me right now. Because she thinks it's funny that I have a fear of picking up dog feces but there you have it she um, this little doggy though really does look I, I know that animals have always been therapeutic and always been recommended for those of you uh, those of us who suffer from mental health issues because when an animal uh, snuggles up to you it's because they have nothing but love for you that's it period nothing else just love and they tend to go to the most broken people which is why, you know, uh, somebody always said, Paul, why, why is it dogs and children and cats even I'll just love you? And I go, it's because I'm broken and they can see it and they're trying to heal me. To which, you know, a lot of people just said, oh, <laughs> that's funny. That's, I'm like, no, I'm serious. I'm, I was never joking about that. I meant that. I still mean it today when I say it, but I guess it takes on a whole different meaning when, uh, when it becomes fully real. You know, I've had partners in the past with, <laughs> you can hear her flapping her cheeks, partners in the past with pets, and the pets became very attached to me, and don't look at me like that, babe, I know you don't like it when I talk about those things, but the pets helped, and here I am with one, again, not thinking that I would be a a, a pet owner, a pet parent, a pet partner, a pet caretaker at this stage in my life. The funny thing was we had talked about getting a dog in a number of years from now when, you know, my schedule had eased up a bit. When I wasn't working 75, 80 hours a week, when, you know, I had more free time. And uh, and yet here I am. And, and we had a, a sort of an incident the other day when... Um, because this, this, this dog is like nothing but solid muscle. And I've owned boxers before. And... Uh, black labs and shepherds and I've had a number of dogs throughout my life this is by far the strongest dog I've ever had and she almost tore my arm out of my socket the other day and I'm I'm six foot two in boots about 180 pounds sometimes 190 depends on how much food I've eaten that week and how much I've spent in the gym how much time I've spent in the gym but that dog is unbelievably strong and I was shocked the first time I took her out. And uh, she took Bridget for a drag the other day down the street, which kind of left Bridget a little gun-shy. 
She goes, I think we're going to have to take her back. I'm like, nope, that's not happening. She will stay here forever with me and I will take care of her. I will even clean up her. Yeah. And I've managed to do it, but I'm telling you, it wasn't easy. But it's funny how (laughs) the things you do for love, and I don't know how else to say it, the things you do for love. I love that animal. I've only had her in my life for six days. But the thing is, a dog will never give you anything but love. Especially if you give some of them love back. So yeah, even though it's it's um, going to be an additional uh, chunk of work for me in my already expressive work day, my, my, my busy work day, I take it on happily and gloriously and gleefully because it's not work when you love it. If that makes any sense to you. I don't know if it does or not trying to read some of the chat here. It's just off to my right on another monitor, so allow me to look away for a moment while I look at some of the uh, comments. Oh, yeah, okay. I started dating someone with dogs recently, and it's funny how attracted you get to them. They're an extension of the love share between partners and a reaffirmation. Yeah, you absolutely are correct about that. Um, It really is. There's something that dogs do. um, You know how the, the old saying, we don't deserve them? There's a lot of truth to that because they give you nothing but love. Was it somebody said something, wrote it once, I think I read it somewhere, that, and, and it put a whole new perspective on, on how I saw dogs in this world. I said, what if dogs think that we're immortal giants? And I went, what? Well, think about it. You know, they only live 7 to 15 years. I don't know what she's barking at depends on the breed but you know 7 to 15 years maybe if you're lucky you get 18 out of your you know 18 years out of a dog and yet you will outlive any dog you ever own period right and you're considered a giant because you're so much taller and bigger can reach the top shelf you know you have these ambidextrous capabilities what is she barking at Lola one second here apologies I might have to bring her into the frame because I don't want her barking. She's very loud, and I don't want to upset my neighbors. She almost never barks, though. Lola, come here, sweetheart. Lola, come here. Come here. Good girl. Good girl. Come. Come, come. Come, come. There you go. Good girl. That's it, sweetheart. That's it. Make yourself comfortable. There's a cushion for her to lie down on. Sometimes she'll lie on it, sometimes she won't. She's not one to beg for attention by making noises, so who knows what she was just barking at. She might have saw something out the window. I set up some chairs for her in my bedroom so she could look out the window. <laughs> no, she's, she's fixing up her blanket now, getting ready to lie down. If she doesn't knock my green screen over. <laughs> it's quite the character. Um... We had her out to the dog park a little bit earlier, just before the show started, and I walked by. I said, oh, there's no other dogs there, so let's let's get her out so she can run. And boy, did she run. And it was great. But then I just called her over, and I put her leash on her, and she was ready to come back home. Now, there were no other dogs there, so I think that's good, because we slowly got to get her used to um, socializing with other people and dogs because she's really big and doesn't know how strong she is. So if she jumps up on a smaller dog to play, the dog could get seriously hurt, and I don't want that to happen. So if we're around children, I'm going to have to keep a very tight leash on her until she learns that she's just bigger and stronger. There she is. She's lying down calm now at my feet, so that's all good. So, yeah, she had a good run today at the dog park, which means she'll probably be sound asleep shortly. We weren't out long, but she tore it up and then just was like, okay, out of gas. was the most extreme exercise I think she's had in a little while, so. So, yeah, that's kind of where my mental health is right now, in a really good place. Physically, I'm feeling 100% better than I was this time last week. Uh, This time last week, I had a fever of uh, only about 38.5 degrees, so what's that, 101-ish, I don't know, something like that wasn't extreme, but um, fever is never pleasant, even if it's only one or two degrees above normal. 
you certainly feel the um, aches and pains that come with it throughout your body. And I did feel that for a night or two. And then got on the uh, got on the Tussin. No, <laughs> got on the NyQuil, actually. And some other medication that really helped. Just a minor bronchial infection. It wasn't COVID, uh, thankfully. Um, Bridget didn't have COVID. She tested for it, tested negative. And it was a, a phlegmy cough. I thought it was pneumonia for a day or two, but it turned out to be... Now, bronchial infection, which I've had before, and I recognized it. I've had pneumonia before. I recognized that, too, so I knew I was okay in the long run. Anyway, back at it. After about a week later, and I'm, uh, I'm about 90%, I'd say. Back in the office tomorrow, looking forward to it. Although I did work every day last week remotely, I enjoy getting into the office and spending time with my colleagues. And a lot of the work that I have to do is um, hands-on, on-site, in-person. And I, I find that staying home for a week, you know, leaving the house just to take the dog out once or twice, go to the doctor, go to the drugstore, that kind of weighs heavy on your emotional psyche, if you will. Because I am a creature of, hmm, I get my energy from other people bit of a social butterfly, if you will. There are times when I like my introspective introversion times, when I just don't want to be around people and I just want to chill out at home, but those are times that I choose. But when you're sick, the, the choice has been taken away from you because if you're a responsible adult, you'll isolate and stay home so that you don't make others sick, which is what I did. It wasn't easy. I skipped out going to the pub on Fridays, which I've been doing for the last 20 plus years. Meeting with the usual group of people for the last 10 or so. And other friends over the years, you know, that come and go as lives change. But yeah, I skipped out on Friday. Um, and there was a concert that was on on Friday they wanted to see, but had to skip out on that too. So we got out Saturday for about two hours and left to Little Miss Home Alone. Well, I have a webcam that I was able to monitor with, and uh, she just slept on the couch the whole time like a little baby. So I think she's going to be okay, and that she's settled quite nicely into her, my humble apartment, my uh, humble affordable apartment in downtown Ottawa, Centertown, the nation's capital, where we try and do our best to do our best. And some days I succeed at that, and some days I fail at it, and some days I realize it's kind of an uphill battle. But the last couple of days, despite the fact that I was physically off, because I did not feel good physically, emotionally, I felt wonderful. I'm still not 100%. But I have, um, I have a better feeling and take on things. You can probably still hear in my voice a little bit of the uh, cold that I'm, I'd say I'm at about 98 percentile foughten off at this point. My voice isn't at its usual low timber because it's a little gravelly, I think, right now. But that's okay. I don't mind. I hope you don't either. I am actually enjoying a beer this evening. Actually, I've had a couple beer, and they're darn good, man to thank my lovely for purchasing them for me. It was a mistaken purchase, by the way. <laughs> um, she tried to get me a two beer and ended up getting me more than that. But just two, anyway. That's just sometimes how it goes. It's the funny thing about ordering online. You can make a simple mistake and then realize it later. But today I had a, a piece of equipment I purchased from a gentleman. A piece of audio equipment and... Uh, I was going through my head, how am I going to get out there to pick it up? Well, okay, I could take a, see, I could take the train to there, then take the bus from there, and then I'd have to take an Uber to get to there, and then get all the way home with it. That's going to take like three or four hours. So I just sent him a message. I said, would it be cool if I sent an Uber to pick the item up? They go, yeah, that's that's cool. So I just went to Uber delivery for packages, and sure enough, they were able to pick it up and bring it here. Problem solved. Like $25. 
what it would have taken three and a half to four hours out of my life. So quite frankly, I think the $25 was well worth it because I did not feel like traveling all the way to Orleans and back again. Even if I still had my car, that was probably, oh, to get there at the time of the day that I would have left, 90 minutes, if I was lucky, hitting rush hour traffic, and then another 35, 40 minutes back. So I'm still, even if I had a car, I'm still looking at a couple hours. And if I had a rented uh, commune auto, that would have been, you know, probably more <laughs> than the Uber. So long and the short of it was, my order today went very, very well. Not that I'm saying Uber is a good company. I'm not saying it's a bad company. I don't want to get sued. We all have our issues. But it worked out in our favor today. And that's nice when that happens. Take that as a win. I had a, and I was, it was weird that during the day, I was mildly anxious about that. Not stressed, just anxious, trying to figure out in my head, how am I going to make this work? Okay, I could take the train, then I could take a bus, then an Uber, and then an Uber, and then a train, and a bus. And, uh, doing all the numbers in my head, this just isn't making sense, and it's still not going to be cheap and take up all that time of mine. So why don't I just have somebody deliver it? Problem solved. So that was a win. That was a win in the ordering department today. And I'll take it. Because wins are great when we get them. And we don't always get them. I think most of us have more losses than wins when it comes to pretty much everything in life. Losses teach us things. Winning teaches us things too, but the things that we're not prepared to deal with. And I'm going to get somewhat philosophical here when I discuss this next thing. When success comes to you in a way that is way beyond your wildest dreams, and I'm not exactly speaking from personal experience here, but anecdotal experience from people I've encountered over the years who said, you know, I knew how to fail. I understood that from the time that I was a child. My first few steps fell on my face, got up, kept trying until I was able to succeed at it. I knew how to fail. I was successful at failing. But I didn't know how to be successful. I thought, well, what does that mean? And what my friend said to me was, I suddenly found myself thrust into the spotlight with more money than I'd ever dreamt of and more attention than I ever wanted. And I didn't know how to deal with any of it. I was 25. I was on top of the world. And I did not have the tools or the maturity or the experience to deal with success. And I thought, you know, there's an interesting lesson there. I think a lot of us are afraid of success. I genuinely mean that. I think a lot of us are deathly afraid of it because we all know failure. And let me change the tune right there because I hate to use the word failure. Because failure means you didn't learn anything. You either win or you learn. You don't fail. You learned that's not how you do things to make it successful in that pathway. There is no such thing as failure. You either win or you learn. And that's how you have to see it. When Thomas Edison, and I'm going to get really technical here for a minute, tried to invent the light bulb and failed a thousand times, they said, you failed a thousand times, why do you keep going? He goes, I didn't fail, I just learned a thousand different ways not to make a light bulb. Except, the thing is, the light bulb was not invented by Thomas Edison, it was invented by a Canadian who had patented it, and he couldn't raise the funds to develop the patent, 
so he sold it to Thomas Edison, who then went on to create the light bulb from that patent and that direct design. Go ahead and look it up. Feel free. It's, it's historical fact. Prior to that, though, Edison did try a thousand different ways to invent a light bulb and couldn't do it. But he never saw it as a failure. He saw it as a thousand different ways to not make a light bulb. So it's all about perspective in the end. You don't fail, you learn. And we're really good at learning. We're just not great at succeeding. And I think that's about all I've got to say today. I don't know if I got deep there or not. I know I talked about my dog mostly because that's the current focus of my life and the joyful thing about my life every day. Here I am, you know, I wake up every day at five. I usually don't get out of bed till six, but now I find I'm getting out of bed earlier to take the dog out first thing in the morning. And I'm actually happy to do it, which is a bit of a surprise because I didn't think I would be. But when I get to spend a little bit of time with her and then bring her back in and I prepare and do my morning show and then head off to the office. Well, head off to work, I guess, remotely, as it has been for the last week, but off to the office tomorrow. Uh, I know that when I am prepared to come home tomorrow, I'm going to be excited to come home to see both my partner and my puppy dog. And that's a bit of a surprise to me, the puppy dog part, the partner. I mean, Bridget's here sometimes when I get home, and sometimes she isn't. I mean, she has her own home. And it's always a joy to come home to her. Uh, but there's just this little extra little bit with this 80-pound bundle of white fur that is Lola. And if you have a little bit of joy in your life, wherever you find it, I hope you can hold it in your hand and keep it in your heart. And that's all i got to say for today. Thanks for coming out, friends. I appreciate each, each and every one of you. And uh, I'll be back again soon. You take care. Voice, 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 voice,